Tonight. So, we'll just use the podium here for a minute, Teresa. Well, tonight we come together and at this time, and I want us to take a few minutes tonight and and talk about what the testimony of Thanksgiving is. And I want to encourage you, uh, give you an opportunity tonight as we end our Thanksgiving service. If, if there's something, you have a testimony of Thanksgiving that you want to, to share tonight and thank God for something he's done in your life, we want to give you an opportunity to do that tonight as well. So if that's something you feel like you want to do a little bit later, we'll give you that opportunity. But that's, I was thinking about Thanksgiving, and like I said, we just had a, a dynamite meal here uh, Sunday night, and it reminded me of a story of this woman who had never cooked a Thanksgiving meal for her family. And she, her husband and son one year were home, and she said, I am finally going to cook a Thanksgiving meal for us, and we're going to eat at home. She said, we eat out every year, and she's tired of Cracker Barrel, Thanksgiving, and all those things. So she said, let's do it. She said, but here's what I need you to do. If I cook a turkey and do all this stuff, there can't be any negative comments, and I don't want to hear complaining at all about the food I am preparing. And if you do, she said, I'm, we're going to get up and we're going to go to the restaurant. So she goes and she spends the time fixing the Thanksgiving meal. And as she gets the turkey ready and she has it on the platter and she's ready to present that, she walks into the dining room holding that turkey. And there sat her husband and her son in their coat and hat, ready to go. I don't think we had to worry about that and Sunday night, and I don't think any of us had to go home hungry. And I hope that you don't have that experience. It reminded me of an experience. Me and Michelle pulled that same thing one year when we had young kids, and we couldn't go anywhere that Thanksgiving. And I said, I'm going to cook a turkey. Well, I had never cooked a turkey in my life. So I did, and we made the whole dinner, and it turned out really wonderful. And as I got ready to take the turkey to put it on the carving plate, I realized I hadn't removed everything I was supposed to remove from the turkey. I don't know if anybody else has ever done that, but I did that. So uh, that was kind of our experience with, with Thanksgiving meal. But a testimony of Thanksgiving, and we take the time to, to thank God for what he's done in our life. And uh, Lord, help me to celebrate Thanksgiving every day, and that my life and lips would eagerly testify to your wonderful deeds. I want that to be my story today. Help me celebrate every day for your thanksgiving that you've given me all my life. And, and may, my li may my life reflect and my lips speak of your wonderful deeds. Amen. Let's look to the, our scripture tonight. We're going to be looking in 1 Chronicles 16, verses 8 through 13. It says, Oh, give thanks to the Lord. Call upon his name. Make known his deeds among the peoples. Sing to him. Sing psalms to him. Talk of all his wondrous works. Glory in his name. Let the hearts of those rejoice who seek the Lord. Seek the Lord and his strength. Seek his face evermore. Remember his marvelous works which he has done. His wonders and the judgments of his mouth. O seed of Israel, his servant, you children of Jacob, his chosen ones. You see, I believe giving thanks is a vital part of the Christian life. Thankfulness keeps us humble. Thankfulness keeps us happy. Giving thanks reminds us of our dependence on God and the generosity that he gives us. You know, giving thanks reminds us that we are blessed no matter what our circumstances, we know that we are blessed. If you live in America, you are so blessed, conditionally better than a majority of the population in the rest of the world. Psychologists and other scientists continue to prove what the psalmist David said thousands of years ago. I like this point here. A person with a grateful heart and attitude is happier and lives longer. I think that's true, don't you? I think thankfulness turns our focus 
towards all the ways that we are blessed. Psychology says when we're happy, it lowers our stress level. Thanksgiving should be our reminder, I think, of God's faithfulness to us. His daily faithfulness that sustains us and even surpasses all that we need. But I think Thanksgiving provides the perfect opportunity for us to grow in our Christian life. I think it gives us the perfect opportunity to grow our prayer life. I want to encourage you to practice what these verses teach us on your own. Maybe in the coming week or coming weeks, this exercise helps us form a much-needed habit of giving thanks that will keep our focus on the blessing instead of the busyness that is coming. We know what's coming. We know we get to Thanksgiving and then Black Friday's going to hit and then we're going to be in December next weekend and then we know it's just a mad dash to the end of the month, right? And we forget about a lot of times that God's faithfulness, God's gratefulness and, and turning that into thankfulness during this time. But I believe Thanksgiving will lift you up if we learn to, during this time of our life, to, to give thanks to Him. Make that part of our daily routine. Thanksgiving will lift us up during this busy winter season, the challenging weather that's coming. And some of you have already been scraping your windows this week as the, as the frost comes. It gets a little trying. We've got to get up a little bit earlier in the morning sometimes and do some of those things. But I think even in that, time of this season. Thanksgiving will train our heart and mind to seek the Lord. Be glad of all our days because we will constantly be remembering what God has done and live in eager expectation of what he will do for us today. You know, David says in Psalms 100, 1 through 5, he says, make a joyful shout to the Lord, all you lands. Serve the Lord with gladness. Come before his presence with singing. Know that the Lord, he is God. It is he who has made us and not we ourselves. You know, we are his people and the sheep of his pasture. Enter into his gates with thanksgiving. We sung about that. And into his courts with praise. Be thankful to him. Bless his name when you come into his house. For the Lord is good. His mercy is everlasting. And his truth will endure to all generations. Giving thanks sings his praises. It speaks of his wonders. You know, many people are sometimes afraid to share their faith with others, to a friend or family member, because sometimes they feel like they don't have the right uh, words to say or maybe the enough knowledge of the Bible to defend their faith or just not have the right answers to all the questions that come. But thanksgiving makes it easy to share Jesus with other people. It is a daily testimony of his wonderful deeds. No one can deny the blessings in their life. Many of us have been part of seeing God do great things in their life or in the life of someone or the life of a family member. And many of us out there tonight were maybe restored from a disease or depression or an addiction. Some of you sit here tonight or watching tonight as a testimony of just being able to get out of bed and, and fight what you're going through, fight the disease, depression, addiction. Fight another day with his strength one minute at a time. Some can share the great restoration of a relationship. Some can share the great hope that they have one day a prodigal that will come home. You see, unfaithfulness will be healed. Our communication can be restored through thanksgiving. We believe that God can do great things even when times are hard. You know, 2022 has, for me, it's been a hard year. Uh, just in loss of two of my favorite people, my grandmother, who I love dearly, and my dad. So I'm ready for New Year's. I'm ready for 2023 and what God has in store. But as I walk through 2022, as I talked about Sunday, we learn, we hopefully learn to 
from saying, why did this happen? Or why are these things happening? Or why am I in this situation? To God, what are you trying to tell me? What do you want me to learn? What do you want me to do? And about eight weeks ago, I quit asking why and started asking what. And I can tell you, I don't know, I didn't do anything special, but God did. I know that God has been changing my heart. He has been closer to me than I've ever felt him in my life. And I, have feel, I feel him speaking through me in the last eight weeks as I started saying, what, Lord, instead of why? And I'm thankful tonight as I stand here in front of my church, my friends, my family, that we serve a faithful God. And I give thanks to him tonight. I give him thanks for my family and this church and all that he's brought me through. But I'm thankful that he has pulled me closer in my relationship with him. And he's still teaching me things and showing me things. So this Thanksgiving is, is different. It will be different. But I'm excited as a Christ follower that we have and I have infinite reasons to be thankful tonight. Because I am blessed. Let me encourage you to shift your eyes away from the difficulties that are remaining of this year and instead start focusing on the truths that we know in our life. We are saved, we are sanctified, we are sealed, we are secured, and we are sustained by the blood of Jesus Christ. And by the power of the Holy Spirit, we give the glory to the Father. And when we start to focus on Him, no matter what happens, no matter what we're going through in life, if our focus is on Jesus Christ, Thanksgiving begins to flow naturally and freely through our life. Not just on the fourth Thursday of November, but Thanksgiving starts to flow in our life daily. And that's what we should want as Christians. Lord, help me to celebrate Thanksgiving every day and that my life and my lips would eagerly testify of your wonderful deeds in my life. I want us to end as we, our scripture tonight in Colossians. Brother Barry is going to be coming in a few moments and leading us in a closing hymn. But before we do that, I want to give you an opportunity tonight to, if there's something that you're thankful for. We talked a couple weeks ago about turning our gratefulness, speaking it into thankfulness. So I want to read Colossians 3, 15, 17. It says, and let the peace of God rule in your hearts. I have felt peace in the last eight weeks that I have never felt in my life. God has given me a peace in my life. And as I look at it, it's nothing, I, nothing that I did any different, but he has done it for me. He said, and let the peace of God rule in your hearts, to which you are also called in one body, and be thankful. Let the word of Christ dwell in you richly in all wisdom, teaching and admonishing one another in psalms and hymns and spiritual songs, singing with grace in your hearts to the Lord. And whatever you do, in word or deed, do all in the name of the Lord. Do all in the name of the Lord Jesus, giving thanks to God the Father through him. Let us have a testimony of thanksgiving, not only for this week, but every day. And let others see that testimony of thanksgiving in us. Let others see the, because of my testimony, let me be able to help someone else. As we talked about the little girl, the little Jewish slave girl Sunday, because of her testimony, Naaman's life was changed. Let us be that, have that prayer tonight. Let us shine in the light of darkness as we think about the testimony we have this Thanksgiving. Will you pray with me? Heavenly Father, we're just so thankful for who you are and what you do and that you're the same today, yesterday, tomorrow. And Father, help us to be more grateful and thankful 
for what you do in our lives. And we're getting ready to turn the page here in a week or so. And we move toward Christmas season and what that means to us. A child is born, the Messiah. And Father, we just look forward with anticipation the Christmas season here at Zion's Cause. But let us not forget what Thanksgiving means going forward in that, living that life. So, Father, we thank you for all you do for us. We thank you for what you do in my life. Father, we lift up those tonight that are sick and hurting and just need a little bit more thankfulness and gratefulness. Maybe this, you, this week may be a week that changes a family's life. It may be a, a week that changes a person's life. So, Father, we just lift that up to you. Now, Father, be with us. We love you. We thankful that we can be in your house tonight. In your name we pray. Amen. Thank you for being part of our service today. Our prayer at Zion's Cause is that this service drew you closer to the Lord Jesus Christ. We look forward to you joining us again next week. On behalf of the pastor, staff, and congregation, may God richly bless you and keep you.